To counteract this, an operator pressed the emergency button, which caused the rods to re-enter the core. As he did, there was an even more massive surge of power. This shattered fuel pellets, which reacted with the cooling water and produced a pulse of high pressure. The fuel pipes ruptured. Daylight revealed the impact of the two explosions, one fuel, the other steam, that immediately followed. The protective concrete cap over the reactor had been blown off. Incoming air had reacted with the graphite moderator blocks, creating carbon monoxide. This caused a fire, which quickly destroyed the tar-coated reactor roof. Unlike Western reactors, those at Chernobyl were not protected by containment buildings. This meant that huge amounts of radioactive material were released into the atmosphere. Within the reactor itself, the now molten core glowed a sinister red. Surprisingly, only two people were killed in the explosions. But more fatalities would follow. For those at ground zero, it was almost impossible to grasp the enormity of what had happened. At the time, they did not realize that besides the physical damage, radiation many times greater than that generated by the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was now released into the atmosphere. The consequences were potentially devastating. Shortly after the explosions, the duty staff shut down the other three reactors at Chernobyl. But excessive Soviet secrecy now came into play. The nearby town of Pripyat, where many Chernobyl workers lived, was under radioactive threat. Unlike Three Mile Island, no immediate emergency was declared. Moscow made no official announcement to the Soviet people. The radioactivity spread rapidly. Thanks to amateur radio hams and nuclear monitoring stations outside the Soviet Union, the world was made aware that a serious nuclear accident had taken place. demanded that Moscow explain what had caused the accident and what the Soviets were doing to limit the radiation threat. The path of the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, the Soviet army and civil defense personnel rushed to contain both the fire and the continuing escape of radiation. Brave volunteers in protective clothing got up onto the reactor building to assess the damage in more detail. To prevent the continuing escape of radiation, helicopters were organized to drop wet sand, lead, and boron carbide into the reactor's gaping hole. Aware that they were surrounded by a very high level of radioactivity, crews went to work in the skies above Chernobyl. they filled the reactor's void. As for the people living near the reactor complex, 36 hours passed before the town of Pripyat was evacuated and everyone living within 20 miles of Chernobyl sent away. Eventually, at least 116,000 people were moved, leaving Pripyat a ghost town. But 
the failure to institute prompt emergency procedures would later prove a problem. Many people in Kiev voluntarily left the city. The reservoir that provided most of their water had been contaminated within hours of the disaster. Iodine tablets were given to all who had been in the exclusion area at the time of the incident. Distribution was later widened to include pregnant women and children in much of the Ukraine and present-day Belarus. On the day of the blast, the heavier products of radiation spread west to Poland. By day three, the fallout had spread across a huge swath of the Western Soviet Union and was approaching Western Europe. The following day, Scandinavia and Germany were affected. Within 10 days, the cloud covered most of Europe.